based on uh, ongoing income from the fund or are that expected returns based on a future value? That's important too. Well, when you say future value, that's typically on a syndication is what you're talking about or? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, for the most part, I would have, this would have been a no brainer before COVID. I love no brainers. I always run from them. Because <laughs> your, your, your typical syndication is going to be a development project, you know, from scratch. Yeah. Or it's going to be a value add on an existing property. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by that is if you're going to develop a, a multifamily or you're going to develop a self storage, uh, typically it, it costs you less money to uh, start from scratch, build up because you're, Construction costs are going to be less than uh, buying something that's currently stabilized and, and cash flow. Mm -hmm. And, but you're expecting your value to be a certain amount at the end. So if your returns are based on, and, and this could be getting distributions mm -hmm. along the way. Yeah. And I'm, we're, I'm just going to use um, any numbers here. So let's say you're going to get 6% along okay. the way. All right. Or you get nothing for the first, couple of years. Nothing for the first couple of years, then a six pref kicks in and then you have a, whatever the back end waterfall yeah, is. And, and you have a, a kicker at the end. And what the kicker would be was if the uh, sponsor either sells the project or if the sponsor refinances the project and then pays you out with the cash out refinance, because what mm -hmm. they're doing is they're basing it on a, a particular value at the beginning and then one expected value at the end. Well, mm -hmm. What happens if that, value at the end doesn't happen. Well, and exactly. And just likewise, when you're, if you're in a scenario like that, one recommendation that I would make is make the, the back end kicker a percentage of your allocated capital. Do not make it a percentage of the uh, return on the asset. And why do I say that? Well, because you're probably going to go into it thinking, well, if they sell this thing for what they say, it's going to be worth I'm going to make this much money on a percent of, of the returned capital. Well, what happens if they refi it? Well, when you refi it, they can only refi at a certain LTV, typically 75 to 80. And then that, that, that means that 20 to 25% of that equity is still locked up. Right. You can't touch it. So that return is now much smaller than right. you thought. So I would always you know, recommend make it a percentage of your contributed capital. Right. Absolutely. Now the, the good news, on the refinance part is mm -hmm. that that kicker is tax free. If it's a refi. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if it's a sale, then you're going to have capital gains, but Hey, you 1031 had, it until they take it away. Here's the thing. You've had depreciation all this time. That's right. In the meantime. So it, it may wash. Yeah, uh, assume, I, assuming you have other passive gains. I the imagine, way. I mean, maybe, I mean, I, I, I'm not a CPA by any means, but yeah. I imagine, in the course of a, of a of one of these deals, if you're taking depreciation, it would at least cover, if not outweigh, your 27% capital gains tax. Right. Like yep. it, it's it's going to wash, if not be in yep. your favor. And and look, we, real estate has about a three three and a half percent appreciation over time since the 50s. Real estate has appreciated three three and a half percent. It doesn't go up. Quickly until now, sometimes it goes down <laughs> until now, but it, it's not a straight line. But, yeah. Um, it usually averages out that way. And occasionally you're going to have a black swan like COVID that changes markets and sometimes changes them permanently. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to have more and more people moving back into the office, but you're going to have an awful lot of them that are never coming back to the office. They're going to be able to work remotely and they're going to have to change office spaces. Yeah. Because of the quick acceleration of e-commerce, because a lot of the stuff that's happening now with the e-commerce business was stuff that they were projecting out the next five, seven years. And it was all accelerated during this. You had people that never shopped online and now are very proficient using this to order stuff with now because yeah. they had to, or they yeah. weren't going to be able to eat. Right. Uh, so it has accelerated a lot of this and it changes market. So, um, that's one of the beauties of being in real estate is that things always change <laughs> and being able to keep up with that.